Welcome to NASCAR and NBC. Great re racing from Richmond this weekend, Steve. Let's just get right into it. A ton to unpack. Martin Truex Jr. dominated the race, but he didn't win. Denny Hamlin won the race. I know Martin was upset. Let's get right into the last restart, Steve. Tell us what you see. Yeah, it was a great race. First of all, had everything wet, tires, green flag run strategy. Comes down to that final restart. And I see why Martin Truex is upset and how Denny Hamlin won the race. So you have to understand the restart rules. So the rules are simple. The leader enters the zone. He can fire off anywhere between the first line and the second line. Without a doubt, I feel Denny Hamlin is a half a car to a car early with his acceleration. But this is no different than the final 30 seconds of an NCAA basketball game. It's no different than the final throw in the Super Bowl. No one buys tickets to watch the refs. They buy tickets to watch the players. Denny Hamlin knows it. That's why he went early. He also knows that Martin Truex Jr. is starting to lag back a little bit, entering the zone, and then he starts to roll up on Denny, right? He's a basically back to his door number because he's going to try to get that forward momentum, and Denny knows it. If he waits... Truex is going to have the advantage. This, to me, is two great veterans with great gamesmanship. I see why Truex is upset, and that's what I love about Truex, because he wants to win the race. But I have no foul on the uh, driver of the 11. I have a little different take. I think the rules are the same no matter what time of the race they are. I think the rules are there for a reason. And if you go early, I think you should be penalized. Just because the guy on the outside, he knows the rule as well. And he's trying to stay within the rules. So I know why Denny Hamlin went a little bit early. I, I would have tried to do the same thing as well. I think NASCAR is going to have to address this with the drivers. You know, what happens, Steve, if you let continue to let this happen? What happens if it happens on a restart on lap 10? You know, so I mean, NASCAR, I know they said they reviewed it, no call, but I think they're going to get a lot of questions from drivers. Okay, what is the rule? Are you going to enforce it or not? And so I think it kind of opens the door. The, the other part of this is Truex was hot. <laughs> I mean, he was mad after the race. Uh, Matt, he said, you know, Denny Hammond jumped the start. He also used him up in turn one. Uh, you can see right here, he's taking his anger out on Kyle Larson. I don't think Kyle Larson did anything. I believe, Steve, that was just a veteran that knows how hard it is to win these races. He had the thing done, late race caution, bad pit stop. It didn't work out. And I think he's just angry overall. I don't think he's actually all that mad at Denny Hamlin. I don't think anyone leads more laps than Martin Truex Jr. with having wins, taking away, slipping through his fingers, circumstances eliminating some of their own doing a few years ago on pit road. But I feel they've kind of cleaned that up with their strategy. Uh, their pit stop wasn't great at Richmond. It wasn't awful, but they definitely lost the lead. And to your point, this is a veteran that knows his opportunities to win won't be forever. Uh, now, I think he's as good as he ever was, and I think he can continue to win races. But the problem is, is that um, you know, there's a lot of very fast cars out there. You know, his teammates are one group he has to beat. The Hendrick cars are good that he has to outrun. It was Kyle Larson at Richmond. And I think that's the frustration you see, right, is just like you said, he knows how hard it is to win a race. I think also, also he, you know, Denny does run him up the racetrack a little bit into one. And Truex doesn't race like that. And you know what I mean? He just doesn't. He, he gives everybody a lot of room. And I think that he just is like, hey, man, I wouldn't have done that to you. I expect you not to do that to me. As we said, we'll see them as they dive into turn one. It, it's not like Denny just runs all the way up the racetrack and takes the lanes completely away, but he's also not right on the yellow line. He enters on the yellow line. Now he starts washing up a little bit. Not, you know, half a lane. You know, that's racing at Richmond. And, and you know, off of two, used a lot of racetrack. You can see the gain that Logano got right there. That shows you neither one of them got off of turn two very well. But, again, I think I think that's just hard racing for the lead. Uh, I don't really see anything wrong with any of that. Yeah, short track racing. I mean, that's what the fans love about it. That's what we're going to see this coming week at Martinsville is, you know, if I need another half a lane, I'm not going to give it up. I'm going to take it from you. Uh, and that's that's what makes these short tracks so much exciting, you know, so exciting to watch. All right. So what started all this? It was a restart caused by caution. Uh, let's go back and watch this this caution. It was a little bit controversial. You see Bubba Wallace gets into Kyle Larson right here. Looks to me like he's spinning out on the front straightaway. Uh, he, he never completely goes all the way around, gets the car righted. The caution comes out. Some people thought this was not a good caution. Steve, what do you think? Oh, I think this caution is needed. Um, you have a car sideways. You don't know if he's going to come back up the racetrack. I think that's a must-throw caution for NASCAR. And I think Bubba Wallace, we saw some video of him after the race go and apologize to Kyle Larson, say, my bad, that's on me. I didn't mean it. 
And if I have something coming back, I understand it. You know what? Bubba Wallace, maybe he's destined to be in the TV booth when his career is over because I think that analysis is pretty accurate, right? Did Kyle Larson get a little loose? He did. Did Bubba Wallace run him over? He absolutely did. Not egregiously. He wasn't thinking, oh, I'm going to spin Kyle Larson out right here. But that's Bubba Wallace taking basically responsibility for the vehicle he drives, which is what you have to do. It wasn't for the win. It was farther back in the field. I think they were battling for a round fifth. So maybe Bubba thinks I probably should have given him another foot, try to pass him getting into turn one. Whether it needs to be a yellow or not, I think that's an absolute no question in my mind. Earlier in the race, the eight, the other real questionable yellow, I can make an argument on either side. Uh, but I think it's really easy to watch him in slow motion and decide it doesn't need to be a, a yellow. Standing in the booth when you see a car make contact with the wall, and I think you almost have to throw it at a short track. Yeah, that's a tough call for NASCAR. You know, if they don't throw the caution and something happens, everybody gets on them. Uh, I, look, this one, yes, is a little bit more questionable. Should they have let that play out a little bit more before they threw the caution? Probably so. But on that one with Larson, you got a, a car spinning on the front straightaway. Uh, th th this is a no-brainer. I, I just This isn't even, in my world, even questionable whether you throw this caution or not. And anybody that's raced at Richmond from in the driver's seat on old tires knows what happens off turn four. You are, you are pedaling that throttle, trying to keep the rear tires from spinning. The thing gets loose. You check up a little bit. The guy behind you is trying to pass you. He gets the left rear quarter panel. Uh, that, that caution we will see multiple times in the future. We've seen it in the past. It's one of the most challenging parts of the racetrack. Um, Steve, to me, this weekend was a massive success. Uh, a lot of conversation about rain tires. How will they work? Can they work? Should they be in NASCAR? There is... No doubt that putting rain tires on to start that race was 100% the right thing to do, and that was a success. We would have sat there for another 30, 45 minutes waiting for the track to dry, at least, and they were able to get it racing, get it going, and you know what we saw? We saw racing. We saw nothing that looked out of the ordinary. It looked like a race. I thought that was a great job by Goodyear and a great job by NASCAR to be pushing to try to get green flags going. I love the rain tires. I'm excited to see where they go. If you go all the way back to when we first saw them at the road course, it was much like what we saw at Richmond. NASCAR decided when they went on. NASCAR decided when they went off because we had no idea how it was going to look. We jumped the cushion a couple times and went way too much rain where there was no visibility. Everyone had to learn. Now I feel like there's this confidence in how they get applied at the road courses. What we saw at Richmond uh, was really the second attempt because we've seen them at North Wilkesboro where we've seen them applied now at a short track that worked uh, marvelously. I think the next steps for me, and it's not right away, but in the future, next year at some point, I would love to A, see it at the race team's discretion, because I would love to see how many guys thought the track was still too wet when they threw the mandatory yellow, and maybe they would have put uh, wet tires back on. I think that would have been a huge mistake after seeing how fast drives were. I also think that I don't love non-competitive pit stops. I see why, but I would like for something to change in uh, the priority of driving pr drying pit road, maybe a reduced pit road speed. Like I said, none of these things are requirements right away. But long term, those are the next steps I want to see. But overall, as a race fan, to think that it's raining as I'm driving to the racetrack and the rain's supposed to move out, to know I don't have to sit for another two or three hours and I get to see cars on racetrack, I think is the big win. Evolution, not revolution. And, and you know, like the, the evolution of the rain tire and NASCAR – after the mistake at Coda, after the mistake at the Roval in the, in the Xfinity race, saying, okay, we want to get these rain tires on, but we're going to proceed with more caution. That, I think, is 100% the right thing to do. I agree with everything you just said. There is a day in our future where it lays on the teams of when they put tires on, uh, slicks versus drives, but we're not there right now. NASCAR needs to help the teams making those decisions. What I will say, Jeff, is not everyone was good on the rain tires. So, now, if I may, crew chief, and I look at the schedule, specifically the playoffs, we have Martinsville coming this weekend. Well, remember, the second trip to Martinsville couldn't be at a more crucial time in the year trying to decide who makes those championship four. NASCAR has now drawn the line. If they're willing to do it at Richmond in the spring, I have 100% confidence they would do it at Richmond again. They would do it at Martinsville again. So you can't throw your hands up and be, well, I don't know what it's going to do to my car. This is now one more thing in the long list of many that falls on the responsibility of the race team. You know you will run on wet tires. Now what do you do to your car to make it drive the best? Um, that's just, you know, one more reason I, I love being an analyst and not a crew chief anymore. They got a lot, a lot of work to do.
Well, you know, Steve, you mentioned Martinsville this weekend. It's coming. It's you know one of our – both of our favorite racetracks. Love going up there. Um, when you are a race team, if you look at the weather, I haven't looked at it yet for this weekend, and you show rain, you can't get in your mind, hey, we're going to go up there and sit around a little bit, eat some hot dogs. You can't think about that anymore. you got to start thinking about, okay, we better be prepared. They might drop that green flag. Uh, it is a different mindset for everybody, the fans included. If you're a fan and you're in a short track, and it's sprinkling a little bit. Don't get in the mindset you were in two years ago. Hey, we got to sit in our car. You better be ready. You may might drop the green flag on this thing. So it's a mind shift for the entire industry, not just the teams. Uh, Martinsville this weekend. I can't wait for it. Uh, I, I love that race. There's so much on the line. People are starting to get anxious. They're not running well. Some are very happy with how they're running. Some need to win already early this year. All that's going to come to a head on Sunday at Martinsville. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.